Mike. Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the um, uncomfortable silence for a minute or two. We were waiting for our guests to come on in, and it looks like the number of participants um, who are joining us has started to slow down. So thanks for being patient. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'll start with introductions. My name is Neil Beach. I'm the principal of Gainesville High School. I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about myself in just a moment. Uh, but going around the room, I'll introduce uh, Mrs. Pomfret, Megan Pomfret, our Director of School Counseling. Brianna Epps, uh, one of our talented school counselors. And Sarah Myers, uh, one of our school counsel talented school counselors also. So uh, between us, we're going to try to guide you through um, what we hope is going to be the first step of a smooth transition for our rising ninth grade students and their families to Gainesville High School. So we're going to talk a little bit about transitions, um, really trying to showcase some of the opportunities and programs that we have at Gainesville High School, and then take a, a little bit of a look forwards to future efforts that we will put in place to partner with you to, to again, help with the transition, um, course selection, those kinds of things. So that's the purpose for tonight. Um, and we're happy you're here. So thanks for being here on a on a gray Thursday or a foggy Thursday evening. Um, so again, my name is Neil Beach. I'm the principal of Gainesville High School. I've been the principal since the school opened. Um, we're in our third year of operation now, uh, which means we're still in a growth cycle. Uh, naively, I thought schools opened in a year and you were done and you moved on. But uh, what we're learning is a, the, the opening process of a school takes about four years to get to a stable population, uh, build programs and systems and, and the opportunities that we want for our students to have. So we're, we're moving through to the second semester of our third year. Uh, and next year, it's, um, it's going to be our fourth year of operation and, and we'll be um, at a stable population. And uh, I, I believe there'll be um, even more good things happening um, throughout the school. Um, I'm in my 14th year of the principalship. I started um, the principalship as the, the principal of Osborne Park High School. I was a principal there for 10 years uh, before being fortunate enough to move over to Gainesville, hire every staff member in the building. And I get to work right now with the, the most talented faculty and staff that I'll probably ever have the chance to work with in education. So I'm, I'm proud of the, the work we've done. I'm, I'm, I'm excited that I get to work with the people I do every day at Gainesville High School. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, an assistant principal at Osborne Park High School and a, a science teacher at Brentsville. Taught, taught science at Brentsville for a number of years before being the Cambridge program coordinator. And obviously, here I am now. So as I've said, we're in our, our third year of operation. Enrollment's about to, to stabilize as we go into the next school year. We've had um, just over 300 transfer applicants, students seeking to join our specialty programs at Gainesville High School. So we're going to have a lottery after February 1 once um, all of those applications are in. And uh, our goal is to have a freshman class of right around 600 so that um, our enrollment doesn't start to creep up uh, past capacity. But um, we've had a good amount of interest in our specialty programs, which is awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the programs for tonight we have on offer. Our uh, art department had a lot of students recognized in this afternoon's or this evening's scoop for Prince William County Schools News. Uh, we had a number of students recognized at the Off the Wall competition. Um, we just recently learned that we are an AP Honor Roll school. Um, the College Board took a couple extra months to, to realize that we were open and calculate our percentages, but we are one of the few Honor Roll schools um, that the College Board recognizes. Uh, based on AP performance among our senior class, we've got a very high participation and success rate in advanced placement coursework amongst our students. Um, and athletically, I think we have a wrestling meet tonight back at the school, a uh, big basketball game tomorrow night. Um, our teams are starting to make a, a splash. It may be a, a, a medium-sized splash right now that's growing, but our athletic teams are, are strong. We've got representation at, in every sport at every level, uh, JV, varsity, and freshmen where there is a sub-level program and uh, our students are, are working hard and competing at a high level already uh, given where we are in our trajectory. So that's a little bit about the school, a little bit about me. Um, as, as I said, the goal for today is to try and alleviate any anxiety that may be associated with the transition process. This is what we do. Um, we've got a lot of strong practitioners who are ready, willing and able to, to help you with the transition to high school. I want students to come to Gainesville High School and um, 
uh, be excited to be there, find something at the school that's a good fit for them, that, that, that excites them, allows them to explore their interests, be amazed hopefully once in a while and feel like they connect to our school. So we make a lot of decisions every day to try to help students um, have those experiences, both instructionally in our classrooms, but outside of the classroom. We want our students to have a full high school experience. So with that being said, I'm going to pass over to our experts and, uh, and they'll, they'll lead you through the program tonight. Thanks for being here. Hope, hope tonight's useful for you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Brianna Epps. I'm one of the counselors here. I am appreciative that you all are here tonight because while we're also helping you with the transition process, you being here also helps us in just helping prepare our students as best as possible as you and your students transition over to Gainesville High School. We're going to go ahead and get started with the PowerPoint, with the presentation. So once again, just welcome to Gainesville High School. We will be going into our fourth year next year. So we just opened in 2021. We're excited to have another class that will be with us for the full four years and will graduate with us. Over the ninth grade parent night. So for this presentation, we're going to discuss some upcoming events. Your students have already started meeting with counselors this last week or so with um, our counselor, actually, Miss Myers, going into your schools, talking with the rising eighth graders, just about in general what to expect at high school. Our Global Pathways to Global Citizenship program, our specialty program, we'll discuss a bit about academic advising and then talk about any questions you all may have and try to answer those. So some important dates coming up, other than just Ms. Myers uh, visiting you all at the, visiting your students at the middle school. The application for specialty programs is going to close February 1st. So if your student is interested in coming to Gainesville and we are not their base school, do you wanna make sure that that application gets in by February 1st? Same thing with any other program in the county, other than the one at Colgan, they are all going to have the same date. For academic advising, we, the counselors, will start meeting with your students at the middle school. Gainesville Middles, we're gonna meet with first, February 12th and 13th. Then we will go to Bull Run and then Reagan Middle School. We're going to meet with your students first. If your student happens to not be there that day, that is okay. We're gonna be aware of who we have not met with and then we will make sure to follow up with you and your student to make sure that we can get their course request and that they are a part of that process in choosing their high school classes. Some other things in February. So you eighth graders are gonna meet with their high school counselor. And then February, March time is also when the counselors are gonna start meeting with our current grade students at Gainesville High School. April through May is the master schedule. So when students choose their classes with us, that's how we as a high school start developing which classes and how many sessions of a class are we going to be offering. So we really use your students course requests to determine that. Um, so we ask that throughout that process leading up until May 3rd, which is the last day to make course request changes, you sit down with your student, you'll have access to see the course request on parent view, students will be able to see it on student view. We just really ask that as a family, you all sit down, look at those course requests, make sure that your student is confident in the classes that they chose. Um, sometimes they can get into the excitement during that day when they're meeting with us but we really just wanna make sure it's something that they wanna do, something that they're excited for, same thing for the electives as well. Throughout August and throughout the summer, that's when we start adjusting our schedule just to make sure that once again, we're offering the set the sessions and the classes that we can and that our students are interested in. Orientation for rising ninth graders and for new students overall will be also be right before school is set to start. So usually around the August timeframe, that is going to be another opportunity where your students can meet counselors, but also meet other new students from other middle schools coming around, other 10th and 11th grade students coming in as well. If you are zoned for Gainesville High School, but you believe you're moving or just will not be attending Gainesville High School, then we ask that you let us know. We'll still be meeting with your student to do the course request uh, with us. We'll still get the course requests in our system. It will still, like, still look like everything is for Gainesville High School. But as you go through and let us know that you will no longer be coming to Gainesville High School, or if your child gets into a specialty program at another school, then they'll meet with that school or that school's counselor will reach out to you all to get those course requests. 
Same thing if you are not currently zoned for us and then you get accepted to come to us, we will make sure to meet with you. You don't have to reach out to us. We get notified of who's coming and we try to reach out. We will reach out to all of those families and students to make sure that we get your course requests too. All right, now our specialty program. Once again, we're the Pathways to Global Citizenship. So overall, what that means is that we have 14 pathway types. And that's just meaning that we have 14 theme set of classes or themes that students can really follow along and choose a series of classes that they really find a connection with. That's what we hope to do with the Pathways program. We want students to take a interest in their education, a stand in their education, but also go beyond just getting the foundation level knowledge in the classroom. We want them to get that knowledge, but also how do you apply it to your community? How do you apply it to just where and when you are right now? So it allows students to go deeper into their study. It allows students to work with our teachers who are often coming from other career fields and have experience in other places or are coming from teaching college students. Um, so it's just a great opportunity for students to be able to work closely with staff, but also come out of high school with a deep project, something that they really put time and research in that in a college essay or maybe in a job interview, they would really be able to talk about and show just how interested they were in a topic and just how connected they got to a certain topic or a certain study while in high school. Within those pathways, there's usually four to six classes. We do have the pathways up on our website. If you go to Gainesville High School's website, the specialty program is one of the tabs at the top where you can view some of those pathways. Once again, it's just, it's not a set line of top to bottom classes, but it's a series, some suggestions that you can follow along with. If you are not zoned for Gainesville High School, we do currently have three transfer pathways and be aware of what schools can transfer based on which pathway. So if your students already taken algebra one in middle school and they are coming to high school with algebra with geometry or higher, then they can transfer in on the mathematics program or apply to the mathematics program. And those students would need to be coming from Brentsville, Battlefield, Patriot, or Unity Read. Our biomedical science program and our engineering design program are two project lead the way courses, different paths within project lead the way, but project lead the way is a CTE program where there are, once again, a series of classes that focus on a specific field of study. So biomedical science for our students that are interested in maybe forensics and the health pathway going into the medical field, that is a great area to start off with. Um, to transfer to Gainesville on that pathway, students would have to be coming from Friendsville, Battlefield, Patriot, or Unity Read. For engineering design, it's Battlefield, Unity Read, or Osborne Park. So on that application, if you are trying to apply and you don't see Gainesville as one of the choices, most likely your student is not bound for one of these schools where they're able to transfer into us on that pathway that your student's selecting. Um, and I believe the application, the specialty program application automatically sets that up that way. All right, so graduation requirements across Prince William County, graduation requirements are standard. So we have two diploma types, the standard diploma, which asks for 22 credits or 22 classes, and then the advanced diploma, which asks for 26 credits or 26 classes, and the five verified credits. So verified credits are just another way we refer to SOLs, and students throughout high school will take English reading and writing in 11th grade, and then they'll take world history, a social, so social studies, they'll take a math SOL, even if they've taken a math at the SOL in middle school, so say they did the Algebra one SOL, they'll still take a math SOL while in high school, whatever high school class they come into their first year, and then a science SOL, just one of those, and then two for English. They'll get their CPR, their virtual requirement with Econ and Personal Finance, and then a CTE credential is just some type of CTE exam, usually that they'll take along with their class. Um, advanced coursework is also included in that, so if they take advanced courses, that can also count as that CTE credential requirement. The biggest difference between these two diploma types is that the advanced diploma asks for a world language requirement in four years of all core classes. The names of the actual diplomas do not mean much. They do not mean anything. What the advanced diploma is really set up for is just to make sure that our students are prepared to go to 
whatever they want to go to after high school. Sometimes we get into that situation where schools or colleges and universities are requiring a certain number of core classes or maybe a certain number of languages in order to be a strong applicant for them. So the advanced diploma is just to make sure that there's not going to be a hiccup there when students are in their senior year and applying to schools. That doesn't mean they can't apply to those schools, but it just means that their applicant application may have to include some other classes or some other work outside of that. Okay, some last few steps on our academic advising phase. So while we're gonna meet with your students at the middle school, what they're gonna do is that when they meet with us, they're going to choose seven classes to take, and then they'll choose two alternative classes or two alternative electives, just in case they're not able to get their first choice. So our biomed, our engineering, we have some electives that are just extremely popular. We have some languages where are just extremely popular and we're not able to offer as many sections as we would like. So ASL is a language that if your student's interested in, most likely we'll ask them to choose a backup language just in case. Same thing with the electives, they'll choose two electives or one elective they wanna be in depending on if they do a language and then we'll ask them to choose some backup electives as well. Students will choose an English, a social studies, science, a math with us. The English, social studies, and science are pretty standard across the board for our ninth graders. We offer the general class, so English 9, or we offer the advanced version of the class, advanced English 9. If your student is talking about being interested in advanced classes, we are seeing them just excel right now in their middle school classes. Once again, make sure to sit down and talk about that as a family. Talk about what to expect in an advanced class. The pace may move a bit quicker. Um, they may be expected to do more work on their own, meaning that there may be a few more things to study at home or an independent book that they need to read at home and be prepared to come and talk about in class for those advanced work. No matter what, our ninth grade teachers understand that our students are still going through that transition process. They're going to be there to help, but the advanced class does ask for students to be a bit more self-led in the academic process. Math is going to depend on just where your student's coming from, how far they've gotten into math based on like where their middle school pathway is or where they'd be starting in high school. All students will be asked to take PE and then you have the option or students have the option to take a world language. Once again, just depending on which diploma type they're going for. Um, the general with the advanced diploma is two years of two different languages or three years of one language. So if they're not ready to start a world language in ninth grade, that's okay. They can start in 10th grade and still be able to finish the advanced diploma by, by the time they're ready to graduate senior year. And then alternative electives or alternate electives. Once again, students will just need to choose two. The interest is going to determine the courses that run, which is why we have that date, that May 3rd date set for when students are going to be able to make class change requests or course change requests. That deadline is May 3rd because we need to start building that schedule for when students come to us and we can be ready for them in August of when we start school again. We ask for the alternate electives also just because some courses can be closed along the way. So we just want to make sure that we're going to have your students' interest at heart no matter if it's their first choice or maybe their second or third choice. Okay. All right, good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Sarah Myers. I'm also one of the school counselors at Gainesville. Um, so just um, to kind of reiterate what some of the things that Ms. Ms. Epps mentioned about the classes. So to give you an idea, this is an example of a ninth grade schedule. And the students will have four core classes. They'll have an English class, social studies, math, and science class. Um, freshmen usually take a health and PE class as well, as along with two electives. So again, some of the students that are taking the advanced coursework or that are on, um, on the advanced diploma track will be taking a world language. That would be like a, a sixth class. And then they'll also have room for one more elective. So that's seven classes in total. And again, so there are there is an option um, for students to take some advanced coursework in as, as early as fresh freshman year, as early as ninth grade, um, specifically with the core classes. So English, science, social studies, and math. 
um, depending on where they're at in their math studies, they could potentially take advanced um, coursework. But and and these are great opportunities for them to challenge themselves if they're excelling in middle school and they're looking for more of a rigorous um, a rigorous coursework. This could be a good fit for them. Um, it does offer a weighted grade in their GPA when their GPA is calculated, um, but of course it is going to require more independent work. Um, it's a greater time commitment. So one thing we ask families to really consider is uh, is balancing all of these requirements. You know, um, some students can handle all four um, all four core classes in the advanced version, um, and others might want to take more of a balanced approach where they select some that they feel strongest in or, or something along those lines, because it is a bit more of a time commitment. And we do have special education services at Gainesville um, because we are striving to build an inclusive community, a welcoming community for all students. Um, students that currently have IEP, IEP um, plans in place in middle school, they will have an IEP transition meeting in the spring. So a little bit later on this spring that we, you will take part in an IEP transition meeting um, with your student's current teacher, your, um, yourself, of course, and um, a representative from the high school. Um, your The case managers from the high schools will be contacting incoming or rising freshman families um, before the first day of school so that we can answer any questions that you may have, what services may, may entail, um, and where, what services will look like at the high school level. If you have any questions at all, we have a, a great department chairperson. Um, Mr. Treadwell is our special education department chairperson. And he is a wealth of knowledge about all of those things. So he'd be a great person to reach out to. And we also have a, a population of English language learners. Um, and of course, our our goal there is two is is twofold. We have the goal of increasing their their English language proficiency as well as their content mastery, um, the academic mastery. Um, we do work closely with the middle schools to ensure that your English language English excuse me English language student um, make sure to make sure that they're in the appropriate classes when they come to ninth grade. Um, and again, just like Mr. Treadwell, our um, department chairperson for English language learners is Ms. Kirkendale, and she's also a great contact, and her email is listed there. Another exciting opportunity that high school brings, I know from meeting with some of the middle schoolers that they're very excited about getting involved, which is a great way for them to meet new people, meet new friends, um, people that you know may have similar interests to them um, that are like-minded. And we have a great website. It's right on our homepage there on our Gainesville homepage. Um, it's under, you can see it's circled there. It's under, uh, under the tab for athletics, but uh, under that tab is not only athletics, but it's also clubs and activities as well. And the great thing about the high school level is that if a student doesn't see a club that totally fits their their desire, their needs, they can they can create one as long as they work to get a um, get a um, representative, a staff member to to sponsor the club. Um, they can they can create their own. Uh, they can create a new club as well. So just some things here um, to point out for our interested athletes. If a student does take does plan to participate in the fall sports, they must have a physical and it uh, a physical done with their pediatrician, and it has to be dated no earlier than May for May fifth first, excuse me, of this year. Um, and they also need to have concussion training. We take that very seriously in the in Prince William County schools. Um, they, there is an online registry that they will need to complete. And if they have any questions, they can reach out to Ms. May, which whose email is listed there as well. Just to give you an idea of some of the opportunities in the fall for fall sports, we've got football, volleyball, field hockey, cross country, golf, and cheerleading. And all of the information that you will need will be posted on that athletic website 
along with the handbook. So going back a little bit, um, what can you what what can you all do to help your current eighth grader, your rising ninth grader, um, before academic advising starts, which is soon, which is in about a month? Um, I we recommend that families sit down and look through the pathway information together and decide is there is there one of the fourteen pathways that their student really is interested in, really, really appeals to them. Um, make sure to review the ninth grade course selection sheet. You'll be getting those through the middle school. Um, and make sure that you have your parent view account active and up and going. During academic advising, your students will have their seven courses selected, as we mentioned, and then two alternative electives ready to go. We'll want them to have those already kind of figured out. Um, and also, but the, but that is an open conversation with their counselor as well. So make sure to have any questions ready on hand, ready to go for that session that they sit down and meet with their counselor one-on-one. -on -one. And then after academic advising is completed, you can check the course requests in student view or in parent view to make sure that they are correct. If between the end of February, you know, as the spring goes on, if you decide that you know, okay, my students signed up for advanced English 9, but we've thought through it and we think maybe English 9 would be better for him or her. You can make a change to that request, um, but the change, the, the deadline to make changes will be May 3rd. Um, and that's to ensure that we have, you know, adequate time to get through all those changes and process all of that. Um, and then the schedules you can typically expect to, I know it's always very exciting and everybody's waiting on, uh, you know, waiting on their little, you know, tiptoes, waiting for the, the schedules to come out. But the, um, the schedules will be released usually the week before school starts, and they'll be in student view and parent view as well. In the meantime, if you have any questions that come up, you can take a look here at our um, counseling assignment. So at the high school level, we we divide up our our student load by our caseload by alphabet so going by the on the last the first excuse me the first letter of your last name um we have it divided up by alphabet so you can take a look here and see who your child's school counselor would be um it is possible that these assignments these caseloads may change for your students freshman year um so for example if you if if I am your student school counselor now, I may or may not be next year. So just be aware that you wanna look into that again at the beginning of next school year. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, these are great people to reach out to. Our contact information is easily found on the website. You can email whoever you, whoever um, your student's alpha uh, counselor would be. Oh, and here we are. Um, there is all the group of us. There we have a, a, um, a big counseling department, really great resources. All of us, you know, we, we love to help out students. We know the freshmen, incoming freshmen have a lot of questions and that's totally to be expected. And another great way to reach out if you know if you don't have any specific questions to email, you will meet us. Um, your students can meet us through orientation. Uh, we encourage the eighth graders when we met with them the other day to go to orientation. Um, you will be the students will have the opportunity to take their schedule, walk around the building as if it's a regular school day, and go class to class. They'll get a chance to meet. Their teachers, they'll get a chance to meet their alpha counselor, um, and we'll have other upperclassmen there as well to help kind of guide and answer some questions that they may have. Um, if they, during the school year, if they'd like to meet with us, we use Microsoft Bookings. Students are able to book an appointment with us at any point in time during their school day that works best for them. Um, it can be asked, accessed, excuse me, through our Counseling Canvas page, through the school website. And also, um, even if they just come right into the counseling center lobby, we have a, a little tablet there that they can make an appointment with that um, using that as well. And then finally, if it's just a quick question, they're always more than welcome to email us as well. We can be found pretty easily through email. 
Um, another great source of information is contact or staying, staying in contact with us, um, connecting through us with us, excuse me, through all of our social media platforms. So the website, of course, our regular website has a ton of information on it. Um, but also you can go ahead, excuse me, and connect with us on our Facebook page, on the Gainesville High School Facebook page, the YouTube channel, which is where we upload a lot of these webinars. If you're not unable to make it, or if you have a friend or a family member who was unable to make it, they can find these, um, these webinars and sessions on our YouTube channel. And then the counseling program or the counseling department in general has an Instagram account that you can follow us on. So now I'm going to turn it over to our director, Ms. Pumfret, um, who's going to help us walk through some questions. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Um, you guys are keeping me busy in the Q&A. Um, Ms. Epps and Ms. Myers, if you don't mind just kind of keeping an eye on that as I'm answering some questions. There, there definitely were some themes of questions that were popping up, so I'm going to kind of review. And these are all very common questions um, that we get, so um, thank you for asking them. One of them was in regards to virtual uh, Prince William classes. Um, so students can opt to take PE over the summer. That's a pretty common one, but that you are not required to. Um, that is not necessary. That there is room in student schedules. Um, if you opt to have your child take virtual PE over the summer, um, you would register your student. Um, we do not register students in virtual Prince William classes. That is the responsibility of the family and the student. I believe that summer registration um, opens March 4th. Um, and that I PE, I'll be honest, it's a popular course, so you don't don't wait on that one. Um, the courses cost three hundred and seventy five dollars. Please be advised a common thing we run into with virtual PE students are expected to do activity. They're given a heart monitor and they have to do a certain amount of activity um, throughout the summer. So please, please keep that in mind. Um, again, that is to virtual virtual Prince William. You would register your students. When we meet with your students at their middle schools, um, if your student tells us, hey, I've decided I'm taking virtual PE, we're not going to put it in their courses, and then we'll, we'll put in whatever else they're trying to put in there. But please understand, if you choose not to have them take um, PE over the summer, you've got to tell us right away, um, because we're not building them a seat. And if we don't build them a seat, it's very difficult in August, um, once we've built the school schedule, for us to go back and buy one, or not buy one, to build one, excuse me. Um, so please let us know as soon as possible, because I want to make sure I've got a seat available for your student. The, uh, the school schedule in high school is different from middle school in that um, it is not easy, not saying it's easy in middle school, but it's much more challenging in high school to make course request changes. We take your student's course requests. They have until May 4th. I'm looking at my, uh, Brianna, Ms. Myers, Ms. Epps, May 4th, is that what I told you? May 3rd. Yeah, yeah. May 3rd, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to know this. May 3rd is the day that we're cutting off changes. Okay, so you, they've got two, three months to go over their choices. Once the school year starts, we are not changing schedules. We're not doing this to be mean. We're doing this because we use course requests to hire teachers, to schedule teachers, to purchase resources, all of those things. So um, please understand if, if your child finds a love of something over the summer and you request a change in August, we're not going to be able to accommodate that. Okay, um, so that's course request changes and virtual Prince William. One thing that I really want to plug that I think would be a great resource for you all. Um, if students are zoned to Gainesville High School and they're already in our data for next school year, I've added them to a class of 2028 Canvas page. I have added all those kids. I've, I've got quite a few students that have accepted it, but ask your student if they've accepted it, if you can look at it with them. We have our course request form. We have a podcast that we recorded last year talking about academic advising. This recording is gonna go on there. Um, there's a ton of resources for you all to explore and look at together. We'll also publish information about our new student orientation, excuse me, new student open house. To save the date for April 18th, April 18th, mark your calendar. We're going to have a new student open house for you and your student to come tour Gainesville High School, meet clubs and activities, buy Gainesville swag. It's a great night. And then we will have a new student orientation the Thursday before school starts. All right. Another question that pops up a lot 
was, um, does my student have to take an advanced class to be on the advanced diploma? So just to reiterate there, no, advanced diploma does not mean they have to take an advanced class, okay? They have to take more classes. They have to have four years of math, four years of science, four years of social studies, and they are required to take a world language, but they don't have to be advanced level. We do wanna see your child challenge themselves. We wanna encourage them to, to stretch and try difficult things. We want your kid to struggle through difficult things while they're in high school academically, rather than when you send them to college and you're spending a lot of money. We don't want them to, to learn how to struggle through hard things then, right? We wanna do it when it's a supported environment with a lot of people around them, they're still living at home and you're not spending you know, a lot of money on that. So again, advanced diploma does not mean advanced. They have to take an advanced course. We'd love to see them try and we will support them through that. We wanna see them stretch their brains and, and grow academically. Standard diploma students also are set up really well for college experiences. They're just a little bit different. Um, the standard diploma has three years of math, three years of science, three years of social studies. One is not better than the other. They're just a little bit different and it really just meets the needs of the kids. Um, if you as a family have the option to determine what diploma type your student is on, um, I'll be honest, unless if it's from an IEP, we, cut, we start all kids on the advanced diploma not to force them into anything, but we just label it in the system and if we need to change it as we go, we do. Um, but that's only just because I have to have something in the system, but we can, we can alter that at any point throughout their high school career. Um, another class that came up, um, are AP classes the same as advanced? Um, and the answer is no. So back in the day, advanced classes like advanced English 9 or advanced geometry or advanced biology, those used to be called pre-AP or kind of like honors. They're preparatory for AP, which is advanced placement. And that's under the guise of the college board um, or, or under that umbrella. Most of our students um, take AP classes in 11th to 12th grade. There are a lot of more AP classes opening up for 10th grade. And there's really only one for ninth grade and that's AP computer science principles. Um, that is a class you, you really gotta be strong in math. So we want our kids to come in with at least algebra for AP computer science principles. Um, Cause we don't want your kids to write up more than they can chew. We want, again, we wanna see them be successful and, and work through difficult challenges. Advanced classes do help prepare students for AP classes, kind of building bridges, building skills, building up that muscle, that academic muscle, those organizational skills, um, but they're not necessarily prerequisites. It helps, but it's not, you know, we've got plenty of kids that have done well in advanced, excuse me, regular English 9 and regular English 10, and they've gone on to AP Lang and then been fine. Um, let me kind of glance through the questions to see. You guys have some really good ones in here. Our schedule, someone asked about our day-to-day -day schedule. So we do an A-B schedule. We call them red and gray days. Red is odd. So that's like our odd number days. Remember red is three letters, so that's odd. Um, so that's our day we do first block, third, fifth, and seventh. And all of those classes meet for 90 minutes. And then our gray days, we have second block, which meets for 90 minutes. And then we do something called Nest. Other high schools like Battlefield and Patriot, they call this Flex, but we call it Nest because we're birds and it's cute. Um, and we have Nest, and it's basically the kids rotate through all their blocks, their 45 minute blocks, designed for remediation and relearning, reassessment, so they don't have to stay after school. They can, it's built into their day. And then we also have something called Advisory where students are grouped together by their alphabet and grade, and they'll travel with these kids all four years, knowing that when they're sitting um, at, you know, at their graduation ceremony, they'll be sitting with kids that they've known for a long time. Um, so we do second for 90 minutes on grade A's. We do our nest advisory block, and that's, they're two separate blocks, but they're 45 minutes. You won't understand it, parents, but I promise you, your kids are gonna get really fast. Uh, fourth block is 90 minutes and then sixth block. So that's our AB schedule. And then let me see what other great questions. Ms. Pomfret, if you can talk about the open house again, we just have some um, confusion on which date it is. We have the 27th or the 18th. 
It's the 18th. So if I've got, I don't know where the 27th is, but it is April 18th. Um, now I'm confused and I'm worried that I'm giving you guys the right date. Let me check my calendar. Ms. Epps, do you mind covering one of the other questions just so I can make sure that I have the right date for the open house? Because now I'm worried. Yes, so I'm giving you guys um, the Quickly back to the um, virtual PE. So if your student tells us while we're visiting, while the high school counselors are visiting um, the middle schools, if your student tells us that they plan on taking virtual PE over either the summer or in the fall or spring semester, we will not sign them up for PE in their schedule. So we're going to ask them to have you discuss this with your family. Um, we'll write on the course schedule to say like virtual PE, and that will not be in their actual high school schedule. So that's going to be one of those things where you just want to make sure as a family you discuss it and that that is the plan, especially if it's the summer option, just because that does have a tuition cost to it as well. See, yeah. we've had, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, had a lot of still questions about just about like virtual Prince William and taking especially math over the summer or during the school year. Just remember virtual Prince William is an accelerated course. So if you take it over the summer, that's only six weeks that your student's getting a foundation level class for the next level of that class. So if your student is maybe strong in math, that's still going to be difficult, especially when they go to the higher level. So while, yes, that's an option to take math during, over virtual Prince William in the summer or in the spring or fall semester, as a counselor, it's just it's not recommended just because students may struggle when they go to that next higher level and then they haven't had the proper foundation or maybe necessarily Gainesville's foundation to take that next level math. So, yes, it's just there's a concern there as well. Um, I did double check the open house is on April 18th. I did see in the Q&A someone had posted they'd seen it somewhere on um, that is April 27th. If I can ask if that person and I'll um, I'm going to send you my email address. If you can just send me where you saw that because um, I want to make sure that that gets fixed. It is April 18th is our new student open house. Um, this is a great way for you and your family to come and, and check out the school. Um, and what time is the open house? We haven't set the time exactly, but I would anticipate five. It's typically an hour and a half, two hour event. I would think 5.30 to 7 um, or 6 to 7.30, but that's um, how we're going to set that time. I'm trying to see any other questions. There's a question about how should I apply for the biomedical pathway? Just a reminder. If you are zoned for Gainesville High School, you do not need to apply um, for any of the pathways. If you're zoned, you have your choice, all right? And if you decide you just want to explore classes and not necessarily do a pathway, as long as you're meeting your graduation requirements, you're okay. If you are not zoned for Gainesville High School, you will apply through the specialty application. And that is can be found on the Prince William County website. If you Google Prince William County specialty application, Please note that the deadline is Feb 1 and they do not move that deadline. So if you are interested in applying, please make sure you have that complete by Feb 1. Um, there's a question in regards to Signet, and this is a great question. Um, we have a great gifted team here at Gainesville High School. And for our students who have been found um, uh, to be a part of the gifted program, and we do call it gifted, not Signet, um, in high school, in ninth grade, they are a part, um, they will do seminars, I think it's once a month, they'll do um, seminars with the gifted teachers, and they're pulled from their PE classes. If they don't take PE here, PE here at Gainesville, um, they will get pulled from um, another class, they'll get to choose. In the 10th grade, we also will be pulling from PE but also starting next school year, we're offering um, an English 10 seminar, AP seminar class that students will get pulled from there. And then in the 11th and 12th grade, students do seminars. They get to choose when they go um, or they get services like they can typically go through their AP classes. Um, there is a question in there about can a student go virtual? Um, for our understanding right now, um, we've not heard anything about virtual only for next school year. It, students will attend in person. Uh, 
And a good question, do they have to follow a pathway? No, nope. if they are here at Gainesville High School and they are not interested, they, they aren't interested in doing like a biomedical pathway or the criminal justice or the world language, as long as students are meeting their graduation requirements, they don't have to do a pathway. We like the pathways because it gives them the opportunity to explore more in depth and they can choose their junior and senior year to do the extended learning experience, which is a great opportunity for kids to really showcase their work. But as long as students are meeting their graduation requirements, the graduation requirements trump pathway requirements all the time. Okay. Um, I, I thank you all so very much. I, I really want to um, brag on our counseling team. We have some great professionals here at Gainesville High School. Ms. Myers and Ms. Epps, you, you know, thank you for the work that you put into this tonight. Ms. Myers, you know, especially going to visit our middle schools. Um, and I, I want to thank all of you for being here this evening. Please utilize the resources on the class of 2028 Canvas page. If your student is known for Gainesville and for some reason isn't added, um, you know, they can reach out to me. That just shoot me an email and I can have your student added. I did send invitations a while ago. Um, but other than that, we're gonna we're closing out one question here, and we are going to wrap up our webinar. This will be posted on the Gainesville High School YouTube page. I will send a message when it is recorded and posted through our Canvas page, also our social media, and I'll make sure that the middle schools know. Um, but we're really grateful for your time. And um, we uh, can't wait to work with you and your students. So have a great evening and thank you all. We look forward to working with you.